Hey, this is Fred from PV Electronics, and I want to talk to you a little bit about Mixing 101. A lot of people look at a digital mixer or an analog mixer, and it's pretty intimidating, and I, I get that, because the first time I remember I saw a mixer when it had rows and rows of knobs on it, it seemed like a million knobs, and I had no idea what any of them did or how to even get audio out of it. So I wanted to take a quick minute and just explain it in the simplest of forms and tell you, don't worry about it, you're not gonna screw anything up. Let's see how you can get started real quick. First thing you wanna do is connect your source to the back of the mixer because what a mixer really is doing is nothing but taking a bunch of different input signals and sending them to some sort of output. And generally how that works is we wanna take these microphones and maybe that guitar and this drum kit and we wanna send them out our speakers. Whether they're powered speakers or they're passive speakers with a power amplifier, uh, all we're trying to do is make it so everybody in the audience or congregation, in the case of a church, is hearing at an equal volume level what's going on up front. So, and, and most importantly in the church, uh, the number one thing is gonna be obviously the, the pastor or the minister, or in a, the case of a band uh, or a live event, it's going to be the lead vocalist, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Right now we wanna focus on getting it up and running in the easiest way possible so that you can understand it's really not that complicated. First thing we wanna do is take your sources and connect them to the back, the back of the mixing console. So if you've got a microphone, uh, it can either go into a snake, which a snake is basically just a bundle of uh, microphone cables that goes from the front of the house uh, all the way to the position of the mixer. So anytime anybody says snake, it's just a bunch of wires that, that take the microphone cables from the front bring them to the mixer and back the other way so that the audio can go back up to the speakers that are up front. Um, looking at the mixer, you really have duplicates of one channel. So if you figure out how to make one channel work, you've pretty much figured out how to make a digital mixer work or an analog mixer for that case. It's really not that hard. So go ahead and let's connect a microphone or any sort of signal device into the first channel. Then let's take a look at the front of the mixer. By selecting one through eight, nine through 16, or stereo in, these buttons right here, really is the view of the first eight channels, the next eight channels, and our stereo inputs. Let's just focus on getting some audio through the console, so by channels one through eight. So we've connected a mic to input number one, which is associated with this channel here. This is the volume of the channel that goes out to the speaker. This is a mute that just turns it off. If you want to hear the signal before we send it out to the speaker, this is where you use the solo button. Plug your headphones into here, and when you hit that, you should hear the input signal coming in from the source. Now, we're going to back up a little bit because we want to start at the top of the signal chain. But essentially, if you learn everything that's on one channel, it's just a duplicate throughout the mixer and it's pretty easy to use. So the first thing we wanna do is connect the source. Uh, we're gonna connect it to the back of the mixing console and then we're going to turn the input up of the source until we see a meter on the bridge. So let's bring a signal into the mixer and then get it out the mains. It's fairly easy. So for this example, I'm gonna use the Bluetooth from my cell phone into the stereo Bluetooth input channel. Now this is the same whether we have a mic connected to the back of it or just uh, any sort of line level input. But we're gonna go to the stereo in uh, this channel here which is 2122 with the Bluetooth signal connected to it. Now this button here, this is soft encoder, will, will adjust the left center pan which means is it gonna come out the left side which is the left output, physically output of the back, the right side output or both. So right now it's set at both and you can adjust it down here when this yellow is selecting, selecting the pan feature. But what we're talking about now is input gain. When this yellow square has highlighted the input gain up there, you see it says minus three dB right now. If we wanna raise that, we increase the volume, see the meter is increasing here, or we wanna decrease the volume of the input. The thing that we don't wanna do is we wanna have enough input so that there's a strong signal present there without distorting the input. If you have any sort of clip lights going on, this, this is this peak indicator right here, the little red light, if that at any time is going on, 
you have too much audio signal coming into the board. Now, fortunately, my Bluetooth isn't uh, putting out enough signal to cause it to clip, but if you do have that red light coming on, you have too much signal. Generally, you want to have the green light coming on. Yellow is a little too much. Peak is, is absolutely um, distorting. So let's take a look at it after that. If we go into the channel by hitting the select button, it opens up the channel screen. Now don't be intimidated by this. All we're trying to do is get the signal out the left, right main so that it goes to the speaker. The simplest way to do that is just turn the volume up. And as you'll see, it's going out the master left, right output. So if we go to the select the main, it is actually coming out right now. So the simplest thing, we've got the input, the channel is not muted, we see a signal here, that means something's coming in from the input, we've adjusted the input gain, and you turn it up. That's it. It is the exact same process for any of the inputs on the mixing console. So if we go back through one through eight, now remember, these are just duplicates of each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, same thing. Let's take a look at a microphone channel. Uh, hit the select button, it brings up the channel. Now, all we have here is we've got EQ that's basically high, mids, and lows. It's no more difficult than that. And you wanna start with a very, very flat EQ. So I would start by taking a, hitting a reset if there's something there or loading a preset for a guitar or bass or whatever the case may be. But the simplest thing to do is just start off flat with no EQ on it at all and bring the level up with a fader, you'll have signal coming in, and if it doesn't sound right for the environment you're in, that's when you can start adjusting the low, mid, and high EQ. Uh, same goes with gate and compressor. For now, the best way to start is just leave it off. Simplest thing, until you know you need to do something, don't do anything. Now, to get going, I think one thing that's really important to note on the EQ is that most instruments are not going to have a lot of low frequencies and you want them out of the mix. So for instance, if you have somebody that has a vocal microphone, you certainly don't want frequencies that are, you know, chest thumping, kick drum and that kick drum and that sort of thing through a vocal microphone. And it causes a stage noise, rumbling, walking around, all of that you want to eliminate from the mix. So one of the easiest things you can do to make things sound good is make sure for the majority of the channels that you do have some sort of low cut going on. That's what this low cut is, low cut. Just turn that up, oh, to about 100 hertz or maybe even a little bit more, and that will remove all those low frequencies from the sources that don't produce them anyway. In fact, more often than not, that's gonna be on your low cut filter, which is here, and also indicated by the LC here, standing for low cut. More often than not, that'll be on. There's only a few instruments like a kick drum, a bass guitar, keyboards, those sort of, that actually have frequencies in the low spectrum that you want to make sure that that's off on. But more often than not, that's going to be on. Uh, other than that, make minor adjustments to EQ. You don't want to do anything crazy. If you have to make EQ adjustments like that or, or like this, there's something wrong at the source. Fix it at the source. The instrument probably doesn't sound good. The microphone may be not be right. Fix it there first. All you should be doing with EQ is minor adjustments and minor changes to the room, and that's all you should be doing. So getting started, all you have to do, hook up your microphone, make sure you have a signal coming in indicated by the meters, adjust the input, which is this right here. That's the amount of signal coming in, so you have enough but not too much. Make sure that it's assigned to the left-right output. Now, that, that's in the channel. See that's left-right? there's assignments of where the channel is going. The LR means it is assigned to the left, right, master, main output. That's the first thing you wanna do. Press that button, make sure it's assigned, and then you should have audio coming out the mixing console, and that's a good place to start. Adjust your level controls here. Audio master here, that's the master volume coming out. But always remember, a good place to start is have everything down even hit the all mute. Make sure everything's down, all of your faders are all the way down to get started, uh, and then bring things up slowly. So one at a time, turn your master volume up, bring up w the uh, input of the microphone that you're checking, get a little of that, and then bring everything else up slowly, and you should be up and going.
If you need anything, visit www.pv.com for more information. Visit your local PV dealer or just give us a call. But remember, all you're looking at with a digital mixer is duplicates of the same thing. If you learn one channel, you pretty much got it.